It's burr on the outside, but it's nice and warm and cozy on the inside. So thankful for that. Thankful for those of you that were able to make it out safely here this morning. Want to pray for our folks that are still uh, shut in and aren't able to get out. I know the main roads, thank the Lord, the main roads are, are good to go. Um, and we've still got some folks coming in, praying that the sun will shine today and all the snow will melt away. Uh, we're thankful for that. And the folks up north are like, oh, this is nothing. But uh, it's something for us here and we're grateful that uh, he's still shining no matter what the weather is like on the outside. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Father, we thank you that in the name of Jesus, Lord, for the privilege of gathering together, Lord, have your own way in every heart, every family represented here this morning. In Jesus' name, Lord, we worship you. Amen. Oh, we sing this is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice, oh, I will rejoice and be glad in Glad in this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Sing with me now, this is the day, oh, this is that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it all. Oh, this is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. When I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart, when I will enter His courts with praise. When I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Sing that again, I will enter. I will enter his days with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad.
just the voices singing it this morning aren't you thankful that we are in the presence of the king of kings and the lord of lords and we get to praise him this morning from our hearts we get to adore him this morning we can sing praise you lord we praise you let's enter in as we sing one more time lord we praise you lord we praise you hear you this morning from your hearts lift up your praise hallelujah that we have nothing to praise him for but just the very breath in our lungs if we think that we've got nothing else to praise him for you've got breath in your lungs this morning he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way we've got something to praise him for and once that praise begins man you're going to find all kinds of things to praise him for thank him for the neighbor that's standing beside you or sitting beside you this morning thank him that again he woke you up this morning he put shoes on your feet clothes on your back we're in a good place this morning we're in a good place and i dare say that if he if he if we just took a minute man we'd be here all day thanking him for what he's done in our hearts in our lives most of all for just who he is this morning he's worth it all this morning he's worth all of our praise 
He is truly worth all of our praise. And all these things in the world pales in comparison to him. We just want to praise him this morning. I know that's your heart. I know that's our heart. So that's what we're doing. We've come to praise him. We've come to praise him through it all. In the name of Jesus. Through it all. If you need prayer this morning in any facet, no matter what uh, you may need prayer for, He's here. And He wants to touch you right where you live. He wants to meet you right where you're at. And aren't you glad we don't have to run to Him? He's running to us in the name of Jesus. Won't you come ahead if you'd like us to pray for you this morning in Jesus' name. sing that one more time but as we sing it again I just encourage you let's make this a declaration over our life words of these songs Lord let my life praise you regardless of how I feel regardless of what's going on regardless of what's happening in society or even in my, even our own personal life Lord I'm Lord this is this is who I am Lord I've decided I'm gonna praise you I'm gonna praise you can we do that? Just make it a public declaration over yourself.
you turn around just greet someone today if you would please praise the lord hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus Right now for those who uh, have needs that maybe didn't come forward or those watching online uh, do you have a need today the Lord knows it he sees it let's pray together father we just come before you in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you that you are more than able exceedingly more and more than able Lord to do ask what we ask or think and right now we ask you for miracles Lord upon those Lord who physically need a miracle Lord in their body Lord, mentally, spiritually, in every way, financially. Lord, we ask you for breakthroughs in the name of Jesus because, Lord, you are able. You are our great shepherd. You're our Savior, Jesus. And we look to you today, and we thank you, Lord, that you're able. 
And we believe you for miracles, Lord, in this house. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord this morning with our giving. And uh, I've asked the guys to, uh, Brother Steve's going to, uh, got it. Let's pray this morning and let's just thank the Lord for his blessing upon our life. Amen. Father, we're just so thankful that, Lord, you see everything in our life. And, Lord, you know our needs. And, Lord, we ask that, Lord, you would, you would bless this house, even spiritually, of course, and financially in every way. Because, Lord, what comes into our hand comes from your hand. And we just give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. One more time, oh yes. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon His word. the Lord a hand clap for praise 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 the Lord hallelujah uh, the Lord is faithful amen uh, that's, I'm saying I'm, the Lord is faithful amen he is faithful praise the Lord things can change in life but he is always faithful I'm thankful for that he is trustworthy he's dependable he's consistent he's always the same he never changes uh, and that I tell you what just knowing that knowing the character of our God and our Savior and that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us is just reassuring at times because he never changes he's a solid rock Jesus is our solid rock and the winds can come and they can blow the storms can blow but our rock never changes and Jesus said it he who builds his house upon the rock is a wise person and that house shall not fall aren't you thankful for that today praise the Lord it may be cold on the outside but you know what you're not falling apart <laughs> oh, praise God <laughs> praise the Lord amen amen praise God well that's good I'm glad to see every one of you here I knew because of the weather the temperatures uh, we, we might be limited and and rightfully so but uh, it's so good to see you uh, you braved the weather and you got outside and and you know what you could have stayed at home and an airplane could have crashed and, 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 and hit your house. But you made the wise decision. Really, you, you were wise this morning. You, really, all those people that stayed home, I, you've got to be careful. With the, we've got to pray for them. That, that airplane, that helicopter might fall out of the sky and hit them. So, but uh, you made the wise decision today. So I'm glad to see you. We love you so much. And uh, I'm just going to get right into the Word. Oh, before I, oh, before I do, Sharon has an announcement. She's going to be ministering. Um, this coming Thursday. I'll let her talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we've got some folks uh, in McMinnville that reached out. They're having a, a women's conference this coming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And they asked me to come and just share the word uh, with them. And I'm believing the Lord's going to show up uh, and show out like he always does. And I'm so thankful for that so uh any of our ladies and they said there's a couple of fellows that they're going to hide in the sound booth um uh, that that would like to to be there so if you can come uh come on out and be with us we're believing the lord for great things amongst these folks it's freedom life church uh right there in mcminnville on smithville highway 4023 smithville highway in mcminnville and i believe this is something that the, the lord i believe wants to do in the local body getting folks together, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, walls coming down, Jesus' name being lifted up, and Jesus having his own way in hearts and lives, R right there in McMinnville, right here in Murfreesboro, and I believe the surrounding areas as well. So if you can come out and be with us, Anchored Women's Conference this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. If I've left anything off, uh, you can come see me after, as I'm famous for doing. 
Uh, you can come see me afterwards and we'll, we'll share it again with you. But uh, if Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night as well, if you wanted to make it out for the other evenings. But uh, we're believing God for great things. Uh, and this is just the beginning in Jesus' name. Love y'all. Thursday at 7 at Freedom Worship Center, right? Or Freedom of Life in McMinnville. Amen. And it's going to be a good time in the Lord. So if you're, ladies, if you're able to make it. Also, just a reminder, February 18th, it's a little, little less than a month from now. Thank you, singers, musicians. Thank you, guys. Um, we're going to be having our, our potluck dinner and then uh, uh, and really celebrating four years. It's our four-year anniversary here at Covenant Church, and I'm so thankful for that. So, uh, I'll, again, we got some time to be looking ahead of that. And also, February uh, 24th and 25th, a little over a month from now, uh, pastors Jason and Summer Collins from Denver, North Carolina, are going to be here to minister. That's on a Saturday evening at 6 p.m. And then Sunday morning, of course, at 10.30 a.m. So I encourage you to be thinking about that. Don't miss that weekend. It's going to be a great weekend in the Lord. Again, February 24th and 25th, Saturday at 6, Sunday morning at 10.30. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles today, turn, if you would, please, to, in the Old Testament, the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, and this morning I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 7. And in prayer about this, this morning's message, I was going back and forth between two passages of Scripture, one in the Old Testament, this one, and one in the New Testament. But the Lord, I, feel, I felt like the Lord kept bringing me back to this passage. And I've ministered from this passage many times over the years. But this morning, I feel in a little bit different way, and uh, I ministered from this message and, and uh, the message that I've had, 2 Kings chapter 4, that is, again, verses 1 through 7. I've talked about the oil and the vessels, and we'll, we're going to be dealing with that today, but we're going to look at this, at this passage today from a different angle. And so, this morning, I'm, I want to talk about how God uses conflict, how God uses conflict. And so, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, if you're there, give me a good amen today. And it says, and, cer and a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he, that is Elisha, said, go and borrow vessels from everywhere, from all of your neighbors, empty vessels, and do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and you shall pour, and, and then you shall pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went out from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the, it, the, so the oil ceased. And then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go and sell the oil and pay, your, pay off your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. And this morning for a few minutes, I want to deal from this passage about how God uses conflict in our life. And we, there's so many passages, passages in the Bible that this could be drawn from because as we'll see this morning, it's not just a, 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 something that can be gleaned from in this passage. It can be gleaned from, from Genesis to Revelation. How God uses conflict in different ways in our life. I'm going to be dealing with that today, so let's pray together. Father, we just come before you this morning in the name of Jesus, and I ask you, Lord, for the anointing of your Spirit right now to minister, for, Lord, clarity of thought and speech, and your anointing upon us this morning to receive. And, Lord, you give us revelation knowledge, and I pray for encouragement today, for strength, oh, Lord, I pray upon every one of us here that your anointing would just rest upon us, Lord, like a canopy, oh, God, rest upon this congregation. And we are careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said again, amen 
and amen. You know, as it concerns conflict, there, there are different views as it concerns conflict that, that we have and people have in general. And conflict meaning that there are forces, there are needs that we have, there are pressures that we can have in life that, and, that are working against us. Again, a conflict, what I mean by that is there are forces, and many times as children of God, there are spiritual forces. There are needs that we have. That could be physical. It could be mental. It could be financial. There are pressures that we have that are working against us. That's what I mean by conflict. But we often view conflict as something to avoid. Because who likes conflict, right? <laughs> who likes pressures working against us? To, to weaken our faith. And, and so we view conflict in, in this sense that we avoid it. We don't, wanna, we don't want conflict. We don't want anything to do with it because we view it as a threat to our safety and to our sanity at times. And, 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 and so we intentionally stay away from it. Now, some people, you might know someone. There might be someone here this morning. I don't know. I don't know. But most people, or so let me back up a little bit, some people... They look for conflict. They look for confrontation. I don't think anyone here is like that, but, but some people are. Maybe you know someone. They just, they're just looking for it. But most people are not that way. We're, we want to avoid conflict at all costs. And also, we can view conflict in this way, that, it, that it's being solely used of the devil because the characteristics of conflict are the same, really, as the characteristics of the enemy, of Satan. When we experience conflict, whether it's spiritual warfare that nobody else knows or whether it's something that, that people do know about, we, can, we experience it. When we face it, we, we, we sense from it that it's coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. It's coming to weak our, weaken our faith. It's coming to get us discouraged. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's coming that conflict is here in my life to discourage and to, to divide and to conquer in a bad way, in a negative way. It wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we, we can view conflict from that perspective, that angle, that it's of the devil. And so because of its similarity with, with Satan, and because Satan can work in it, I want nothing to do with it. But the reality is this, is that conflict in this life, and I'm just reminding, I'm just refreshing your pure minds by remembrance this morning because you know this, but in this life, it is, it, we can, it, it, I want to remind, again, in this life that conflict cannot be avoided. In this life, conflict is, abs, is actually very normal. It's normal to experience conflict. We don't pursue it. We don't look for it. We don't, we don't desire it. But it is to be expected. It is completely normal. Can I just say that again? To maybe, because sometimes I know when we go through things, and maybe, again, that's between you and the Lord. But I want to, again, just remind you today that if you're going, whatever you might be going through, it actually is completely normal. I never forget years ago, actually it was 2010, I remember the year very clearly, I had sinus surgery, and it wasn't the full Roto-Rooter thing that, you know, the people have sometimes, but it was sinus surgery, and I was in the, in the pre-op room and getting, re and, and getting ready for the surgery, and the doctor, who was a wonderful doctor, he had come in, and, and all of my visits before uh, the surgery uh, he had never said what he was about to say just a few minutes before I was about to go in. And I'm uh, right, right there and uh, ready. And, and he said to me, walked in, and he, he said a few words of greeting. Then he said to me, what you're about to experience is a tremendous amount of pain. But it's completely normal. <laughs> Don't worry, that's all good. <laughs> That's normal too. <laughs> he said, you're about to experience a tremendous amount of pain, but he said, but it's completely normal. And it didn't hit me until after he walked out because he walked right out after that. <laughs> it didn't hit me. It's one of those things that somebody, you know, somebody says something to you and you're like, yeah, 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 that's wonderful, yeah, yeah. 
Then a little few minutes later, you're like, what did he just say? And it didn't hit me until after he walked out. I was like, he just said to me, I'm about to experience a tremendous amount of pain, but it's completely normal. And he did say, I'm going to be out. I was out under the anesthetic, but, but he was talking about afterwards. And oh, yes, it was an extreme amount of pain. But, he may, but he, I'll never forget it because it was so, it was so uh, unusual <laughs> the way he did it. And afterwards, I met, again, a wonderful doctor. But I'll never forget it. You're about to experience a tremendous amount of pain, but it is completely normal. He was normalizing my pain and trying to get me to understand that what I would experience, the, the, the pain that what I would experience after the anesthetic wore off was completely normal again. You're not going through something unusual. You're not unique in this. Everybody experiences that. And so we can't, we can't avoid it because it's unavoidable, that conflict. We can't, we can't work, uh, we, we, we can't work our way away from it. It's going to happen. And even though Satan can work through it, we can't rebuke it away. Even though our flesh is stirred up from it, we can't believe ourselves out of conflict. It's just going to happen. Again, we don't look for it, but it's just going to happen. But in this passage that we've read this morning, there was conflict that this lady, this woman of God and her two sons were going through on many different levels. This is a woman of God who had lost her husband who was a prophet. And he was a co-prophet, a helper with the prophet Elisha. Now, Elisha was the main representative of God to Israel at this time. But this, the, and this husband's name was not mentioned. But he, we can rightfully assume that he was a man of God. And here he dies, and we're not even told how he died. But we can tell, I think we can assume from this passage using some disciplined imagination, that, that, she, that he died prematurely. They had two sons that were still at home, most likely maybe teenagers, at the latest in their early 20s, and, and he most likely died a premature death. And it would have left her lonely, heartbroken, confused, empty, and concerned, overly concerned, and, a, and, a, and rightly so, for her two sons. Because not only these things hurt her on a personal level and her sons, but it left her, it left them broke. And it left them with a debt that they could not pay. And it left them, fa it left them facing a, a creditor that in that culture in that time that, that told her, if you don't pay off your debt, I'm coming to possess your two sons. And they will be mine. And get this, there was nothing that she could do about it. There was nothing her two sons could do about it. She was in a place, she was in that place of on conflict, these, these things working against her and her family to steal, kill, and destroy. And 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 she was in that that situation. And this is the setting of this conflict. For this lady and this family that we read about this morning. But point number one I want to bring to you about conflict is this. It's that God brings blessing out of conflict. Again, God brings blessing out of conflict. And this morning, it's not, this is not overly complicated. This is simple. But I tell you, it's the, it's the simple things that are, mo that are the most powerful. God brings blessing out of conflict. And in this situation that this woman was in, in these two sons, God would bring one of the greatest blessings that they ever experienced, but one of the greatest blessings that we can read actually throughout the Bible. This was an incredible miracle a template, an example for what God will do with every one of us when we find ourselves in a time of conflict. That God uses blessing, God brings blessing, I should say, out of conflict. You know, the history, what's interesting is this, in this passage, and it, this is not just this particular, particular example, but it's, it's repeated over and over again in Scripture. But the history of this woman and her two sons and her husband who had, who had died the history behind them is pretty much unknown. We don't read anything about this family 
until this happened. Let me say it again. We don't, the Bible is silent about this family. It doesn't record their family picnics that they went on together. It doesn't record the sons being born and the good family times. It doesn't record those times, those moments like that, or maybe around the, the, the table and just having a good time and being together. It doesn't record all that. The Bible is silent on that. And until this moment, and then when this conflict happened, it doesn't mean that they didn't have conflict before, but when this conflict happened, God the Holy Spirit chose to say, hey, I'm going to put this in my word. I'm going to set this as an example because there's going to be other families and there's going to be other individuals that are facing things that they cannot solve in and of themselves. But I want my people to know that if I did this for them, I can do it for any person. If I can bring blessing out of that conflict, then I'll bring blessing out of any conflict. Hallelujah. It's interesting, again, that this, the history about them up until this point is silent. And, and get this, if their family life, if their family life would have continued as normal, their story would have vanished away in the halls of history. Again, if their family life was completely normal, it would have just vanished away in the halls of history. None of us would have ever known about this, this family. And it's interesting because sometimes in, our, in our, our greatest desire, or one of our greatest desires in life, especially if you have a, your, your family, if close-knit, whatever, one of our greatest desires at times can be, can be, Lord, I just want, I just want things to be normal. <laughs> you, ever, you ever asked this? Have you ever said this? Lord, I wish my family was normal. <laughs> yeah, I know you're getting on a good lap because you've said that yourself. Oh, I wish my family was normal. How, how come my, our family is, is not normal, normal like everybody else's family is? And sometimes we could pray, Lord, could we just be normal? <laughs> and then I'm thankful that God at times will give us glimpses into the lives of other people and realize that normal is overrated. And, and normal doesn't mean, normal doesn't, quote, normal doesn't mean there's no conflict. And get this, miracles don't come out of normal. They come out of conflict. I'm going to say it again. Miracles don't come out of normal. Where every, when we think of normal, we're thinking everything's good, everything's fine, no, no, no problem. Again, no con we think normal equals no conflict. But if there's no conflict, and if that's the normal, get this, miracles from what we see in Scripture don't come out of normal. They come out of conflict. In Acts chapter 6, as the church was, was brand new, the Bible records one of the first conflicts the church had. In Acts chapter 6, the beginning, the, the, the beginning of that chapter where the Bible says that the Jewish widows were, were arguing with the, 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 the Jewish widows, but they were the Hellenist widows. In other words, they were Jews that had adopted uh, uh, parts of the Roman uh, culture of that day. And then there was the Jew, other Jewish women, both Jewish, but again, some had adopted the uh, parts of the aspects of the Roman culture, and some had not at all. And they were arguing among themselves. Imagine that, argument among God's people. <laughs> but as they were arguing among, among themselves, it was brought to the attention of the apostles. And they said to, they said they gathered some of the people, the leaders together, and they said, you know what, it's not good for us to break away from, from, uh, from, from the word of God and prayer and to serve tables. It's a temporary problem. Let's search out among us and choose out seven men who are full of the Holy Spirit and of, and of faith. And they can take care of this. And I'm summarizing this, but out of that conflict came men like Philip. Great men of God. Out of that conflict came great men of God like Stephen who God would use to, to actually 
uh, the Holy Spirit would use Stephen's testimony before the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 8 as a, as a, as a prod in the heart of, of Saul. God would use that Stephen. But where did it come from? It came from conflict that brought these men out, that brought this situ situation out. And it's interesting what we see throughout the Bible. It started actually in the Garden, in, in the garden of Eden. That's some example for all of human history. That Satan and sin is what brought the initial conflict. But out of that conflict that looked like it would ruin the plan of God, God revealed that the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And God told Satan, the woman is going to have a seed. And that seed, you, you'll crush him his head or heel but he is going to crush your head that came out of conflict it came out of conflict and God used from we again we see it all throughout God's word but God used the quiet pastures and maybe as sometimes boring pastures and the boring sheep that that David would watch as all in the field all by himself and God would use that to teach David to go after God when no one else is looking. God would use those quiet pastures. All he's, at, all he's got there is sheep buying back and forth. And he's like probably thinking, where all my brothers, they're all hanging out and having a good time. And my dad has put me with these sheep all by myself. But God used that sheep, those sheep, and God used those pastures to go after God, David, when no one else, when no one else is looking. To go after God when no one else sees you. Oh, what a, and it was out of that that God, that God developed in David a heart that was after God. I tell you, God will use it all. I say it again. I said God will use it all. He'll use the quiet times, the lonely times. He'll use the busy times. He'll use it all for his glory if we trust in him. And we see that throughout God's word. He brings beauty out of ashes. He brings healing out of hurt. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Again, I could keep on going because the Bible's full of it, but they full of those testimonies. But the idea is this is that blessing comes out of conflict. No conflict and no blessing. And in reality, the greater the conflict, the greater the blessing. Again, not that we look for it. We don't have to. But it's, again, God will bring it into our life. And when we trust in him, when we look to him, God will bring the greatest blessings in our life out of the greatest conflicts in our life. Number two, God brings desperation out of conflict. He brings desperation out of conflict. You know, in this life, we often pursue relief and rest and relaxation and when we find it and there's nothing, nothing wrong with those things but in this life we get busy and we can often again we can often pursue and our pursuit in life i've been here before i know i've i've, I've got the t-shirt and the full wardrobe it seems like at times we can get tired and worn out and it's that the that the pursuit in our life is just some rest just some relaxation from, just some escape from the, from the conflict. Just, just give me a break. <laughs> we can think that way. Just give me, I just need some relief. And get this, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But, but get this, we have to be careful that in the conflict that our, that our main pursuit is not just simply relief and, and escape from the conflict. Let me just say this as it concerns that, that if our conflict can be solved with a good night's sleep, with a vacation, or with a movie, in which we observe somebody else's life for a, for a, a couple hours, and we can, we can vicariously escape through somebody else's life, more exciting than ours, a fake life, okay? If our, if our, if our conflict can be solved again with a good night's sleep or a vacation or with a movie, it's, that means that conflict is very, very temporal. Because in reality, you get this, in, a re, in, in reality, if our conflict can be solved in those, solved in those ways, then it's really not a life-threatening conflict. 
But here this morning, when that conflict threatens our very existence, our calling, and that of our family for the short term and the long term, it brings desperation. Let me say it again. When that conflict threatens our existence, when it threatens our calling, and it threatens that of our family, that conflict goes from, you know what? A good night's sleep won't solve this. A vacation won't solve this. I need God to step in and help in this situation. And the desperation that God brings out of conflict. When we don't have the answers, when we've tried a through Z or B through Z. God's Jesus is plan A. But we've tried the others. We've tried plan B through Z. And none of it works. And we can't figure it out. I tell you, God will use those times for us to be desperate. For us to cry out to him in a way that we would have never cried out to him. Had, not been, had it not been for that conflict. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And God brings desperation out of that conflict. And I tell you what, desperation is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. And I wonder at times in our own life, would we, would we be so desperate if everything was just perfect all the time? Would we be so desperate for the Lord? You know, it's interesting, when, when Israel came up out of Egypt, the Bible tells us, in the book of Exodus, the Bible tells us that God did not lead Israel the short way to the promised land. And the reason why is the Bible says is because they could not handle war at that time. They couldn't handle war in, that, in their infancy of deliverance. They didn't get this. They had been bound for so long that they, they, that they didn't even know how to be free. And they needed some time and they needed some conflict over time for the Lord to teach them. For, the, for, them to get through, for them to realize, hey, we left Egypt, but Egypt hasn't left us. And we're going to have to let go of Egypt. That would not happen quickly. And tell you, God uses those things. God used, God used it with Israel, and he used it for Israel as an example for us that God uses time. God uses the, the prolonged conflict in our life. He'll use the Amalekites. He'll use the Canaanites. He'll use the Fleshites. He'll use the Neighborites. He'll use the Bidenites, the Liberalites. He'll use them all. He'll use them all. He'll use the TVite. He'll use the Internetite. He'll use Sportite. He'll use it all. Prolonged conflict. He'll use it to create a desperation in our heart. A desperation in us that cries out to God that regardless of what's going on, we need the Lord. That's what happened with this woman, this, this woman of God. She cried out to God. She, now, it was manifesting with her crying out to Elisha. But her heart, that Elisha, again, was God's representative for Israel that day. And her crying out to Elisha was really a manifestation of her crying out to God. And she was crying out to God, basically saying, I need some help. Oh, Lord, I need some help. And... And God will use, again, conflict in our own life for us to be desperate for Him. And can I encourage you today, don't compare your conflict with other people's conflict. <laughs> don't compare yours with other people because you are not them and they are not you. And God will handpick. He has unique conflict in every one of our life. And he'll allow it in our life again to create, his de to create desperation in us. Last of all, God brings, number three, God brings wisdom out of conflict. He brings wisdom out of conflict. This woman, this woman of God, again, I keep referring to her as a woman of God because that's what she was. This woman of God would have never known, get this, she would have never known how to pay off her debt and to save her sons if there wasn't this conflict, this issue, this problem that was facing them, trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But it was out of this conflict that God would show her how. I'm going to say it again. It was out of the conflict that God would show her how. It was through her crying out 
to Elisha, again, was really her calling out to God, that God would use this to, using Elisha to show her not to overlook or belittle what she had left. Elisha said to her, what do you have in the house? She said, all I have is just a little jar of oil. It's all I have. But God would show her and use through this situation and us as well using this story, this true story. God would show her and show us, don't look down on what you have. Don't look down on what you have. It can seem like a little, but when God touches it, it will, come, it will become much in the hands of God. And God would give her, again, the wisdom because it takes wisdom. Hear me this morning. Oh, census. It takes the wisdom of God to be able to look at something small and say, Hey, God, if God puts his hand on that, and he will, then that which is small can feed a multitude. Hallelujah. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom not to despise, not to despise the small things. It takes wisdom. Wisdom says don't despise the small things. Wisdom says don't despise that which, you know, looks like it, it can't work. Don't despise that. Wisdom says I'm going to use what you've got and I'll multiply it. And I just want to encourage you today. This morning in regards to this point that God will use what you have. Again, wisdom says don't despise the little things. Don't despise what you have. Again, the woman in her own, in her own heart said, well, all I have is this jar of oil. That means nothing. What does that mean? What is this jar of oil compared to the need? It is nothing in, compared, in comparison to the need. But God would use this conflict again to give her the wisdom to say, it is not simply a small, insignificant jar of oil. That jar of oil for you and I is a type of Jesus. It's a type of the Holy Spirit. It's a type of what God has given to us in the person and the work of Jesus. We would never verbalize it, but in our spirit at times, we can feel that what we have in Jesus, that what we have in God's Word, it's not enough. We need something more. And that's the lure of Satan in conflict to look beyond, to look beyond that which God has supplied. And God say, no, I'm going to use what you got. I'm going to use what you have. But here, the wisdom doesn't stop there. Because Elisha said to her, okay, you got a jar of oil, this is what I want you to do. And the Lord will give, give us direction. He'll give us wisdom. He'll give us guidance. And he said, I want you to go borrow vessels from all of your neighbors. And the implication is as many neighbors as will, as will let you borrow. If they, but I want you to go out and I want you to ask and ask, can I borrow, yeah, can I borrow that pot of, that pot of clay with that plant? Is it? Can I borrow that? Can I, I'll, I'll give it back to you. And it's interesting, this passage, he said, I, I just borrow it. And here, here's the wisdom that God will give us at times. He'll show us that, 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 that God is going to use others in unconventional ways. God will use borrowed vessels. And he said, don't borrow just a few. Borrow as many as you can. But God gave her the wisdom and showed her that God will use others. In, even in unconventional ways, borrow, borrow a vessel. Come on, you want you just go out and ask your neighbors for it, take up an offering or something. <laughs> but he said, no, just borrow some vessels. Uh, mean, implying, I'll give it back to you. And again, that doesn't make sense to us. There's things that, that, that won't make sense to us, but in, in the moment, it, doesn't, it won't make sense until afterward. But I'm telling you, God will show us in conflict that God will use others in, in, in sometimes in the most unconventional ways, ways that we never saw it coming. And I can't explain all the details of it because what is, what is your wisdom? Go borrow some vessels from your neighbor. What's that to you? 
What's the specific wisdom, unconventional in the natural wisdom that God will show you? That's between you and the Lord. But I've learned this in life, that you cannot put God in a box. Because there are times in which God will say, you know what? I don't need any borrowed vessels. I'm just going to let their oil keep on flowing. And I'll put it in your hand. I'll put it in the cup. But there's other times where God will say, no, no. Go out and just, I want people to see it. Go borrow vessels. Unconventional. Different. But God will use it. And I tell you, God will give us wisdom and show us those specifics in our own life and they may not be they not be and may not be the instruction that God gives your neighbor but it will be the instruction that God gives you and you and I need to be close to the Lord to receive that that wisdom but God also showed her God also showed her through Elijah Elisha to pour out the oil and 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 God showed her that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour out the oil, a type of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pour out the oil in private before it can be spent publicly. He said to her, when you get the vessels, I want you to get that, and get in your house and I want you to shut the door. That's such an interesting statement. I want you to shut the door, meaning that the pouring out of the oil was not in front of everyone to see. It was all, it was all by themselves. And I want to encourage you today, let the, the oil, God intends it, for it to work this way, for the oil to pour out privately before it's poured out publicly. And God more than anything, get this, God more than anything is interested in you. He wants your heart. He wants your time. He wants your attention. He wants you because in the private place where nobody else is looking, nobody else can see, he's told you to shut the door on some things. But in that private place, I'm going to pour out my oil in your life. Hallelujah. I'm going to pour out the oil. And you'll experience a flow of the Holy Spirit that you never knew before. But you need to shut the door on some things. You need to shut the door. It's just like Jesus when he healed the, Jairus' daughter. And he got to the house and he, Jesus had received the message. And Jairus did too, had received the message. You know what, your daughter's dead. No need to bother the master anymore. And it was right after the woman with the issue of blood was, had stopped the crowd. And Jesus felt power go from his body. He said, who touched me? And ultimately she was healed. And it was in that moment she's experiencing healing. Jairus' daughter is still home at dad and he re- and still, um, still home in bed. And she rece- he receives the message, your daughter's dead. It's done. It's done. Don't bother the master. But it's interesting, Jesus kept on walking. That was unconventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom was, okay, it's done. It's over. I just received news. It's over. It's dead. But here's the wisdom of God in that situation. You know, Jesus and the Holy Spirit would have led Jesus to do this. Keep on walking. And he said by the Spirit of God, as the Spirit of God whispered it to Jesus' ear, she is not dead, she is only sleeping. (laughs) Hallelujah. And she got there, and the mourners were there. They were professional mourners. They were mourning, they were weeping, they were wailing. And Jesus walked in and said, what are you wailing? What are you doing? She's not dead, she's only sleeping. And they went from wailing to making fun of him, mocking Jesus. But this is what Jesus said. He said, get, all of you, please get out. He would not have been rude, but get out. Get out. And he brought only Peter and James and John and the, and the parents, and he brought them in. But again, get, get this. Here's my point. He got doubt out. He got doubt out. Can I ask you this, this morning? I sense this in my spirit. This is between you and God ultimately. But are there some things that you need to shut the door on? Are there some relationships? Are there some things that are drawing your attention that you need to say, oh, no, you don't belong in here. You don't belong in here no more. You need to get out because you're filling me with doubt. 
You're feeding me with doubt and with fear and anxiety and, and with, or with lust. And you need to get out. No, shut the door. Bring doubt. Or put doubt out and bring faith in. And Jesus, Jesus did that. Jesus could have healed or he could have healed that girl with all those mourners there. But he made an example for us to show us in that situation. Here's, here's the wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives. I want you to say, no, all of you got to leave. Similar wisdom that God gave that woman. I want you to shut the door. And in private, I want you to pour out the vessels. Pour out, pour out the oil. Pour out the oil in the vessels. Pour out the oil in the vessels. Pour it out. The Bible says that in that private place that, that the oil kept on flowing until it got to a point where she said to her son, one of her sons, bring me another vessel. And, she, and he said, there's not any more vessels. And there, we don't know how many vessels there were. There could, there could have been 70. We don't know. Could have been 100. But the way, this, the, way the, the, the Bible records it, if they had a gazillion vessels, that woman would still be alive and still pouring. And, they, and people would have made a shrine out of it. Look at this, look at this woman that's a thousand, several thousand years old. But the oil, the Bible says that when there was no more vessels, the oil ceased. And here is what we see in this passage. One of the many things we see that while there's empty vessels, when there's empty vessels, the oil will always flow. The oil will keep on flowing when there's empty vessels. And what does it mean to be empty? It, what it means to be empty again, a good night's nap will not solve it. A vacation won't take care of it. A movie, a break won't take care of it. It's when plan, every plan has been exhausted and nothing else will work. That's what, that's what we see in, that, in this desperation, and that's what we see, in the, again, in this situation. That's when, we, that's when we know we're truly empty. When nothing else will work, the only thing that will work is, is Jesus. And Sam and the singers can come back. God will use conflict to bless us. He'll use conflict to make us desperate, and he'll use conflict to give us wisdom. I believe today that there's some wisdom that God wants to pour out. That, that oil, it represents, again, the Holy Spirit. And that with the Holy Spirit, there comes wisdom. There comes power. There comes a, a greater anointing with that oil, of the, that, the flow of the oil. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet, if you would, please, this morning. Pain. Pain is not the end of the story. The prodigal wasting his, inter his inheritance is not the end of the story. The sickness is not the end. De debt and lack is not the end. It's not the end. I, want to, I, just, I just want to encourage you this morning again that this conflict that you might be in right now, whether it's private or whether it's something known in your family or whatever it is, God knows. But that conflict is not the end it's not the end God will use it to bring some of the greatest blessings that you've ever known he'll use it to bring make you desperate again he'll use it to give you wisdom wisdom that you would have never had if it wasn't for that conflict praise the Lord let's pray this morning father this morning we just thank you right now that God, you will use everything. You will use the hard times, the good times, every time for your glory in our life. And I pray this morning that our hearts would be encouraged, would be strengthened in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that anyone here that has been going through some conflict, that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus and bring encouragement, bring strength, oh Lord, bring wisdom. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Sam plays. If I'm just going to open up these altars. If you need, if you want to come forward, you just want us to pray with you. You have no fear, no worry about what other people would think. All that is irrelevant. We're 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 family here. But if you just need that touch from God, we want to pray with you today. If not, just where you are, making an altar for the next few minutes. Amen.
Come on, make it an altar right where you are. If not, come forward. We want to pray with you.
And the wisdom of God says, do not despise that which just looks small. That, w- that, which, that which on the outside looks insignificant. We see it again throughout God's Word. Example after example after example. Primarily even with Jesus Himself. Where the multitudes would say, or some would say, I should say, I should say can anything, Jesus of Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? We know as family, that can't be. But they were looking at the physical. They were looking at the outside. I encourage you today. Wisdom says, no, no. It's from Nazareth. If, it, if it's from God, then I want it. Hallelujah. It's from, if it's from God, then that's exactly what I want. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord. That you use, Lord, you use the simple. Lord, you use that which is not strong, that that which is not wise in the natural, that which is not noble. You've chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The things that are not to bring about the things that are. Lord, we thank you that God, you, you, you work miracles with what's in the house. And Lord, I thank you this morning. We praise you, Todd. Let us lead this place encouraged today, challenged, and strengthen the faith. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you today. Again, love on each other before you leave, and and, uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Amen. Amen.